Hello there, lovely people. It's Alex from Nintendo Life here. And <laughs> did you see that? Yes, the Animal Crossing Direct only went and blooming happened, didn't it? And I, I've got to say, it's one of the best directs I've seen in a long time. But then again, I'm a massive Animal Crossing nerd, so it's not terribly surprising that I would be so happy over something that really didn't actually include an enormous amount of new information, but what was there was just deliciously sweet. We're gonna go through the bulk of it, I'm gonna tell you my opinion, and that's about it. If a formula works, don't fiddle with it too much. I'm gonna be using the PR email just because it does detail a majority of things, and if there's anything small in there that they haven't mentioned, I'll either remember or omit them entirely. Splendid. But anyway, that's more than enough waffling. Let's dive right into things. <laughs> Island tours, that was a big thing. I mean, well, okay, let me, let, before we go too far into it, my God, does the game just not look absolutely drop dead gorgeous. Like it looked good before, it looks even better now. I don't know how, but it just, it's just so delicious. Just so wonderful to look at. It's actually semi-moving to see such a pretty game and it be Animal Crossing because I love the series. It's amazing what you can get away with with a fixed camera in it. But yes, Island Tours. The island has been a thing in Animal Crossing for a long old time. In fact, I think it uh, initially started with the original Animal Crossing, the GameCube one, not Dobutsu no Mori, which I've probably butchered the pronunciation of. And in New Leaf, it was Tortimer Island and everything. He went off and, you know, he did all the islandy things. Loads of bugs, fruit, you know, the whole the whole kit and caboodle. Only now, you can still do all that good, all that stuff, which is so good because that was a really fun thing to be able to just go off and do some stuff. Except now, there are random islands with random stuff on them. It's not just one island and one, you know, sort of depending on the day. Oh, look, there's a stag beetle. Now you can go to any number of random island. I must, I don't know this, but I got the feeling from the way they described it that they are kind of semi-randomly generated. Maybe in the same way that the island that you live on is in the same way that every town you've ever been on in Animal Crossing has always been semi-randomly generated. Maybe it will be to that degree, but I don't know. That is mere speculation. However, they did say the word random. To go there though, it's not free and you can't just use bells. You need to build up Nook Miles and get enough to get a Nook ticket. And I was very pleased because when they started talking about Nook tickets, I thought, oh my God, don't be leaf tickets. But it's not, as far as we know, as far as everything we've been shown so far, there are no microtransactions in the game, which is just such a good, I can't even begin to describe. But you get a little Nook ticket and you take it to the airport and you say, hey bub, I'd like to go somewhere. And the pilot goes, Pah, I'll take you somewhere. God knows where it's gonna be though, which is, when you think about it, kind of irresponsible. But at the same time, I think they get you back and it's Animal Crossing, so nothing bad ever happens, so it's fine. But it looks really cool, and the idea of being able to go to an entirely new location with new flowers and everything, you're not constantly just waiting for stuff in the shop to appear. You can go to these random islands, and if you've saved up your Nook tickets and everything, you could probably go to multiple in a day, maybe? Don't know that for certain, but I'd be surprised if that was a, a strict limitation. So yeah, it looks like you're going to have a lot more freedom. It also just generally looks like there's going to be a lot more stuff. But yeah, I'm I'm honestly, that that's a great solution. A great solution and a great evolution of the original concept of going to the island. Yeah, it seems great. Party play! Woo! This wasn't really new, but it's the next item on the list. Eight people can live on one island. We kind of already knew that. One interesting thing that I don't think we knew though is that when you have other people who are not the leader, when they uh, you know grab fish or bugs or any items off the ground, they don't go into their own inventory and they don't go into yours. They go to the recycle bin, which is an interesting way of doing it. I'm not entirely certain how I feel about that because you've got to kind of remember Oh, I've got to go to the recycle bin now, but I don't know, maybe you could carry a recycling bin. That would be quite good, actually. Maybe if you could carry a recycling bin around, and so you just sort of, you lob it on the ground and you have a rummage through and uh, get it out of there. That could work. It may not even be in the game. I'm back into speculation mode. It's not actually mentioned here, but I've just remembered the residence services center, you know, that starts off as a little tent. It eventually becomes a town hall. It's a very... I, I'm, I'm amazed I didn't see that coming, to be honest, because it's so obvious that, yeah, of course that little thing is going to eventually become the Town Hall. And there's more to talk about with the Town Hall later. Land development. You can get a land development permit once your entire island is what they're describing in the PR email as fully kitted out. 
no idea what that actually means, but I'm guessing once you, uh, you know, once once you've kind of established, maybe when you've got a maximum number of villagers, or maybe when you've got like the museum and Able Sisters and all that good stuff, because they're back in it as well, then you can stop using that pole vaulting pole. You to get across rivers, you can stop using the little ladder to get up uh, onto the higher bits of ground, which is another new thing, which is really cool that we didn't see before. It's just like a little step ladder. It's adorable. You can start to build little ramps or staircases you can start to build bridges, and it looks like there is going to be way, way more flexibility than there has ever been before. Like, you know, you, it even looks like you're able to actually place and show exactly where you want it to be, rather than dragging Isabel to a vague location. She goes, meh, it'll be somewhere around here, I'm sure. It's a small thing to be able to do that, but it's something that we've been vying for and screaming for for so long, and I'm, I'm just so pleased it's there, because... It's Animal Crossing, it's Nintendo, it would have been so easy for them to just go, oh no, there's a, there's an element of random fun chance, or something like that. But they haven't done that. It is proper and proper tasty. And you can also like smear stuff on the floor, like paths, like actual real paths. You don't have to make custom designs and just place them on the ground now. It's a big, big, big game changer. You can make the island, some of the shots where they were showing some of the islands that have customization on them, Made them look nothing like Animal Crossing t uh, village uh, towns. It's it, they just looked so beautiful. There's so much more you can do now. You can actually make it look semi-urban if you want to. You can make it look like downtown. It doesn't have to just look like a grassy plain. And I love the grassy plain. And I don't know whether I'm going to have the um. I don't know whether I'm going to have the patience to properly kit out an entire town. But you can have like a little sort of like a little corner that could be just like your shopping district and you have like the able sisters and you want to and you can place them wherever you want oh, oh, oh i'm excited and then the biggest part of it all you're not just changing what gets placed on the ground you can change the ground you can actually like carve into the earth you can make great big lakes you can make rivers wider you can make rivers disappear you can raise land you can lower land it's you can make waterfalls. It's just, oh God, the possibilities. It's honestly looking like it's gonna be one of the most solid and replayable life sims that certainly Nintendo has ever produced. But honestly, of all the ones I've ever seen, it's it's pretty up there. Like it's seriously up there. Then there was Nooklink, which was the, um, well, the, the, the smartphone app, you know, yeah, the Nintendo Switch Online thing. And you know what? Actually looks like it's gonna be fairly useful, which, I didn't expect when it first came up, I was just like, oh, Nintendo Switch Online app, uh, it's gonna be some sort of rudimentary weird system, but no, kind of like Smash Bros, kind of like Splatoon 2, there's actually stuff you can do, it doesn't, you know, it's kind of self-contained rather than having to constantly communicate with the game. You can do the usual stuff which you'd expect, like talk to people online with voice chat, but you can also do a really, really cool thing. You can scan QR codes, which have custom designs on them, because yeah, custom designs are back. I mean, we pretty much assumed they would be, but good to know they are. Scan a QR code, get a custom design, so you can share it around the world if you want, and you can just inject stuff straight into your game. That's a great thing. What's even better is they still, you can still use your old designs from things like um, Happy Home Designer and New Leaf, and they will still work in New Horizons, which, for me, I never really made anything that significant. I made the Christmas jumper I wear with Sonic the Hedgehog on it. That was fun. But I know for a fact that there are a lot of people, probably watching this video in fact, who are have just sunk so many countless hours into the game and don't want to have to recreate all of their custom designs, you know, pathways and clothing and things like that. And so they can just open up their 3DS and just scan it in. That is such a wonderful quality of life feature. And it's something Nintendo really didn't have to do, so top marks. Oh, that's interesting. I don't, I don't think they mentioned that. You can actually use your, um, you, you can use your smartphone as like a keyboard as well in game. So you can, you know, you used to be able to like type and stuff. That's actually weird. That's actually weirdly useful as well. Again, something they really didn't have to include. And I don't know, maybe for a lot of people, it'll be, you know, something that they never use, but that's kind of cool. Actually, you don't have to use the voicey voice. You can just and send messages can send rude messages. Maybe you'd be able to do that. Oh, that'd be really cool if you could do that for like posting messages as well, telling villagers to, you know, 
fall down a well or whatever it is you want to do. But that's not confirmed. It's Alex's brain doing a wonder. Choose your island! Yes, you can choose your island, just like previous games where you choose your town, like Rover will come up to you and go, Hey, is this the town you're going to? And you go, Nah, nah. That river's in a stupid place, and he goes, my mistake, is it this one? It just cycles through, yeah. Basically, you get a choice of like four, and I'm assuming you can say it's none of these as well, when you're sort of booking your, your, um, your, your package holiday to this deserted island, and so you can, you know, you just got the choice there. It's really, it's, it's good, it's just what we expected before, but it's a really nice way to include that, a really nice way to inject it and keep the whole theme going. They've clearly taken a lot of time and effort with this, and it really shows. That's also when you'll be asked whether you want to be in the Northern or Southern Hemisphere, it seems like it's your choice, it, it doesn't matter, you could, because you're going to an island, it doesn't matter, maybe you want to, maybe you live in the Northern Hemisphere, you want to go to the South or vice versa, you can do that. And it does actually affect the seasons, so when, when Northern Hemisphere is in spring, in Southern Hemisphere it'll be in autumn, I know we knew that before. Just want to be absolutely super crystal clear, and it's good. Ooh, I don't think that was mentioned in the um, direct. Or if it was, I missed it. Resident services, the thing run by Tom Nook, you know, and all that, you know, where you can sell stuff as well with Timmy and Tommy there. Although you can also get Nook's cranny, so I don't know, maybe one goes there and one stays in resident services. Who knows? But that is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And if you can indeed sell stuff at any time of day, that's a big deal for Animal Crossing, because a lot of the time, you just, you couldn't. I mean, I'm pretty sure retail closed. Yeah, retail definitely closed. I remember when I used to wake up early in the morning. <laughs> Crazy times. Standing outside and waiting for the, the light to come on so you knew it was time to go in. Yeah, so that's, that's really good. That's really good. Your tent can become a house. Yeah, it's, it's the same as it ever was, isn't it? It's just, you know, usual Animal Crossing stuff, but it's just so pleasing to see it there. And in such high quality, the houses and doors, like they've got the skirting board and stuff around the outside. It's just adorable. And yeah, overall, I think it looks, yeah, it looks great. And I don't know whether the expansion is more so. I mean, the rooms looked around about the same size as I remember from New Leaf, but I don't have exact uh, exact numbers on me. But a big thing is when you're placing items, you don't have to be in the room. You, you Your uh, character can just go poof, disappear into a cloud of disillusion, and you can go around actually placing things without having to go whoop, 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 whoop. I'm available for sound effects. Again, a fairly basic thing, but it's so pleasing that it's there. It's proper happy home designer style stuff. I don't know exactly how it's gonna work, whether you can use the touch screen or anything like that. I'd be surprised if you couldn't use the touch screen, but I play mainly docked anyway, so I don't really care. Also, there's like storage, you, you know, you used to be able to store stuff in like drawers and stuff. It looks like you're gonna be able to do it at least anywhere from within your home, just from the, um, just from your pockets menu. So you, you rummage through your pockets, you find a chest of drawers, as that happens to me all the time. And you just go, you know what, I don't need this right now. And you just go, go to storage. And it goes, whoop, 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 whoop. I don't know if it actually does that, but I'd like to think it would. There's the customization options, um, down to light in your character, down to skin tone, hairstyle and clothing, placing building. Oh my God, yes, place buildings wherever you want. Oh, you can just, you, you can say to people like residents, you can say, hey guy, you're moving in literally there. So they're not going to upset your flower garden. Again, it's another small thing, but it makes a big difference. It's, it just means that, I, and, and if you're wondering, you know, worrying that, oh, you quite like the idea of random uh, people arriving and stuff like that, you can place down lots that are like designated areas for villagers to move into, and they will randomly then move in, but they will only move into that area or those areas if you designate a few, for at least that's what it seemed to be from the direct, which is a good way of getting both. Or maybe you can just like talk to someone and say, hey guy, you're moving in? You should move in next to me. Actually, I'm not sure if I want the villagers living next to me. Big important thing, really, really pleased it's in there. Minor, of course, but so good. Then there's the airport. This is where you use the Nook tickets and your Nook, well, not your Nook miles, but your Nook tickets. And you fly to different islands and stuff like that. I also think that's where you go to go online, so it kind of replaces the train station, but also it appears to replace the post office as well. The post office did seem to not do an awful lot, and we won't be berated and told that we have several billion bells in our account when we really don't. So that's always good. Island-wide broadcasts as well, yeah. This is weird. Basically, Tom Nook at the at the start of every day stands at a microphone and goes, 
Let the bodies hit the floor. Let the bodies hit the floor. He stands at the microphone and he he d he does some announcement. You know, like stuff that's going on today. Hey, today is uh is uh, egg day or whatever it is. You know, any number of uh, special events that are going on. Maybe he announces the turnip prices as well. That'd be handy. I don't know. It just seemed to be an announcement. Everything that's new to this day, which is kind of cool. Maybe like when new residents arrive. Makes me think of like uh, Heidi High, if you know anything about that. Which if you do. I'm not sure how I feel. Incidentally, I saw some people saying that uh, Egg Day is like, ah, oh no, you can't even call it Easter anymore. I, that's not why. They're making it international and there's plenty of people in the world who don't celebrate Easter and wouldn't know what it was called. It's just Egg Day. Features and updates to further your island enjoyment. Ooh! New residents. You can get new residents just like all the previous games, but when you go to those islands, those mystery islands I mentioned before using your Nook tickets, you can go there and sometimes there'll be villagers there and they'll be like, hey guy, and you'll be like, want to come live on my island? And they go, oh, all right then. And they come and live in your island. It's a cool way, it's a cool way to find more people, it's rather less of just a sort of a random chance you can actively sort of increase your odds by going to different islands and stuff like that. I think, I'm down with that, I think that's a really cool idea. Again, small, kind of makes me think a little bit of a pocket camp, in the sense that you just go to these different places and oh, there's people and you can invite them along. That seemed to be more rigid. This seems more free flowing. Free updates as well, we're getting free updates, they, they just said, are there going to be free updates? Yes. And that was enough for me to go, ah, we're getting free updates. They mentioned it for seasonal things like Egg Day and stuff like that. Is it actually called Egg Day? I'm, I'm, it's, is it here? It's not listed here. And there's also like some fun interaction with like special items and stuff with uh, Pocket Camp. If you're into that, alluded to it slightly earlier, but yes, additional facilities, things like Able Sisters and Nook's Cranny and stuff, and the museum. I mean, the idea that they wouldn't have a museum is like insane, you know, I mean there has to be a museum, but there's a museum and it looks so, so bloody beautiful. I don't think any museum in any previous game, even stylized, has ever looked anywhere remotely this good. It's so pretty, I love it to death. I don't know if they're actually uh, mentioning it in here. No, they haven't. They haven't mentioned it in the PR Naughty Nintendo. There is now fast travel to some description. I, we, we don't know exactly. They kind of glossed over it a little bit. Certainly it seems like they said if you're lost, you can make your way back. I'm guessing maybe Maybe if you like had had like a, a pole or something, like a vaulting pole, and you needed that because oh my god, you can jump! You can jump over a little square of water, and it makes me weirdly happy. But say you've pole vaulted over something, and then you 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 drop your pole or something, or you 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 know I don't know any number of things. You you lose your pole somehow. I'm guessing you can be taken back. It's like emergency services, and it sounds an awful lot like Mr. Rossetti back there. It'd be really interesting to see if we can fast travel to things like, uh, you know, like the museum and stuff like that to save a little bit of time. Maybe fast travel to the airport. That could be, that would be really cool actually. Um, although th that's what I assumed it was, but now that I've thought about it again, it did sort of seem to only just take them to your house. So I don't exactly know how that's going to happen, but either way, it's definitely something. And um, I, would, I, I would like to be able to go to other places as well, but who knows? There's also the other usual stuff like the fishing tourney and the, the the bug off and all that good stuff, which have new people for some reason. Um, it's the, the instead of Ch Chip, it's Chip Ju well C J, which I'm assuming is Chip Junior. And you got oh, I can't remember her name, but she's adorable little little tiny Joan, little little bitty Joan. And she's adorable, and she sells turnips now. I don't know what's happened to the older ones; they've gone off somewhere. Also, new um, uh, bug catching dude. Can't remember his name, but he looks punky as hell, and I like it. Amiibo support, yeah, it's um, it's Amiibo. It, it seems to be very similar to how it was in uh, New Leaf Welcome Amiibo. So yeah, not not terribly surprising. Like you can invite people to the campground and stuff like that. You can talk to them. You can also do some like weird photo shoots. And that was about it. I mean, I I, I feel like I feel like I've missed some stuff, but I. I cannot for the life of me remember what it is and it's not in the PR so it's probably some silly little thing that I absolutely love um, but isn't necessarily important. 
You know what, I've got an idea. Isabel! How can I forget Isabel? She handles all the bridges and stuff. Overall, I've got to say this was, this was wonderful. You know, the, even with what we already knew about Animal Crossing New Horizons, I kind of already knew, for me at the very least, can't speak for everyone naturally, it was going to be the best Animal Crossing game to date. However, from what they've shown now, there's no competition. There's so much new stuff. So many small things that, that they've added. They've just sort of sprinkled it round. But it's made an enormous difference. Like a colossal difference. Being able to edit the terrain. I mean, I, I saw a certain ex-Nintendo employee who said, Oh, I'm not sure about that. Whoa. Saying it, it feels a bit wrong, like, because you kind of get to know the layout of your town. He's a coward. And like the mystery islands and everything, oh, it's just... And the visuals, I know visuals really are not that important. But they look so good. They look so good. And you can craft stuff and... It's, this is just, it's, it's a bonkers, bonkersly good looking game. And frankly, I, I cannot wait to get my hands on it. Like, I... I'm I'm champing at the bit. I really am. I I just that direct was phenomenal. It's like ah, easily one of the best directs I've seen in a long time, and that's not something I say lightly because Super Smash Bros came out. But this was just wall to wall good, warm, cozy. The whole thing was just so satisfying and wholesome, and everything they showed. I wasn't once looking at something and going, "That's annoying. That's a bit disappointing." It was all just. It was just all good. It was all good. Or was it? Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, then why don't you uh, take that uh, subscribe button off on an island adventure where you can make the rivers flow. And be sure to check out nintendolife.com for all sorts of lovely Nintendo related content. Thank you again for watching. Bye bye. <laughs>